density from Maxwell's equations. You integrate it once to get an electric field. You integrate it twice to get the electric potential. But you don't need to do this to just know that if there's a sheet of positive charge, if I have a test point charge, as I push it through this interface, it's going to see more and more negative charge the closer it gets to that negatively charged metal. And so I'm going to have to work to keep pushing it and push and push and push. And finally, when I break through, then it's free sailing for me. But it's clearly worked for me to take a test negative charge and push it through this electrified interface to get it to the other side. Alternatively, if I took light and created an excited electron, it rolls down the hill, it knows left from right. It doesn't want to go toward the negative charges. There's the built-in electric field-driven asymmetry that tells photo-excited carriers that there is a right side of the device and there's a left side, and in this sign of the effect, don't go to the right, go to the left, because you're repelled by that extra negative charge on the surface of the metal. This field strength can be very large. It can be on the order of a volt dropped over on the order of a tenth of a micron, so it's on the order of 10 to the fifth volts per centimeter is the static maximum electric field. And charge carriers and solids will see that very big field and be separated, never to recombine, very quickly, within a picosecond. So when they're excited, they know left from right, and they move, and they don't back react, and that creates the current throughout the circuit that makes the solar cell work. Okay? Good. Now, if all there was to that was creating the current, we would always get all the current and all the voltage in a real solar cell. But for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That material is trying to oppose what the light is doing to it with its best efforts. It's trying to recombine those carriers because its natural equilibrium state is to not have any excess carriers on it. When you shine light on the system, you've created a photostationary state. It's out of equilibrium. It's like you're heating up a liquid or the way I tell my students in a class I teach. It's like somebody's dumping in blue dye in one side of a pot and somebody else is dumping in red dye and you've got to keep dumping in dye because there's a drain in the middle and it's trying to drain out dye through the bucket and you've got to keep adding it. And the bigger the drain, the more you've got to keep adding to keep the color the same. And that's just what's happening with the sun and photons. It's adding photons like adding dye. And if the material is trying to recombine them, it's draining out those photons. And you want to build up the concentration of electrons and holes as big as possible to get as much current and voltage out of the system.